with challenges and opportunities. Believing Philippians 4.13. You and I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Teacher. Author. Speaker. Delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento for the heart and message for the people today. Here's Bonnie Liphart. If you have some teenagers or if you just would like to have some more information about how to bring your teenagers or even understand them this time of the year, bring them to the Lord or to uh, where you can communicate with them. We have a person here that has a teenager and works with teenagers, and uh, so she's going to be helping us in accomplishing this. I was kind of interested in Isaiah, where it talks about um, something that is like a dichotomy. It says, Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no child. Uh, break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you have, who have not travailed. Then it goes on to say, for the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. And your descendants will possess nations. And they will resettle the desolate cities. So our descendants, it's a promise to us, will possess nations so uh, whether we're a person with children or without children we're around people with children and uh, welcome again i'm so happy you're here wendy westmoreland from Hartsel, alabama and this is in the year 2003 that we're taping this sometimes i use tapes in a different a year even because when you go over one year to another uh, you might be using some from another year but the uh, information about teenagers it changes but it remains Definitely. the same but it remains the same <laughs> yes now uh, my daughter said she could remember the day i don't think you're old enough but she remembers the day that the teacher came into her room and said we will no longer be having scripture or prayer anymore in our room in the school and it's from that day in 1962 that we have seen some really horrible things happen in our country yeah. and around the world. We had an opportunity to take a trip around the world, speak in a lot of churches, and we did learn that the need to be needed, wanted, loved, appreciated, and just feel that there's self-worth in being alive is uh, true in every nationality, especially for the young people. The young people. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are struggling to find a place. They're they really are. To find what they are, who they are, why they're here. And, and they, they feel like that we all went through peers. that. Oh, yeah, we did. Of course we did. Uh, but it, it, it is even more prevalent at the moment. It seems like that our teenagers as, are different than the way I was. When I was uh, a young person, you kind of could go to both sides of the fences, you know, where you went to church on Sunday and you did a lot of things you shouldn't do through the week, but it seems that the teenagers I know today are getting off of the fence. They are going one way or the other. One way or the other. And they're ones that are selling out to the Lord are just Amazing. They're they really amazing. amazing. It just gets you excited. It does. It does. Now, you are now working with young people, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm just, uh, we are just starting something in our church where I'm, I'm starting to help in uh, well, a human had, video uh -huh. uh, area with the teenagers. And human uh, video. Human video. Well, tell us what that is. Well, right now, our, our teenagers are doing just a few skits to some uh, contemporary Christian music, and we're just acting out, doing some sign language, some dance, just different things to that. Um, my church has had that program for a while, and I'm just now starting to work in that area. Um, it's a very um, scary place to be sometimes, because the, the teenagers, um, um, sometimes know more about things than you do. They're, we have some pretty smart teenagers. 
And uh, they keep you on the on your toes. They really do. Um, but I'm just happy that I, I'm working with them now. The, the Lord called me a year and a half ago to work with the teenagers. In and, fact, uh, you've been actually teaching a vacation Bible school. A vacation Bible school. I have been director of the vacation Bible school at our church, and I do have a Sunday school class for smaller children. Um, and he had been calling me to work with the teenagers, and uh, I didn't like teenagers very well, or I didn't think that I liked them. And I thought, do you think God, that had anything to do with your own childhood? I think maybe teen years. when uh, when I would think of teenagers, I would think of rebellious. Um, just not respectful, smart aleck, trouble. Um, so I didn't want to really work with them. And uh, for a year and a half, I avoided that. I thought God must be wrong, which is very funny to say God's wrong. Uh, finally, I give in, and I'm, I'm starting to work with those uh, children now, and it's great. I, I love it. I really do. I, I want, my husband and I want our home to be a home full of teenagers. I want kids to come to my house and hang out. Uh, I want them to be able to run to us if they need us for anything. Now that was one thing that my daughter says that we really did well was that we had teenagers anytime they were welcome at our house. In fact our house was the one they came to and I saw some really good things and some kind of sad things that were going on with the uh, with the tel with the television station <laughs> and with them <laughs> watching television with teenagers was because uh, they're they're just so expressive but they want to be liked so well but that they will do what their peers want them to do many times but that's to the good in addition to going the wrong way you tell us a little bit about sure who your children are hanging out with <laughs> that's what you need to do you need to to watch who you allow your children to go home with. Um, now, Karen Wheaton is one that has, here in Alabama, something yeah. that, that has to she do. She has a great group. Yeah, she's, she was on uh, Victory Network back a dozen years ago when we were doing that. We'd come to our church in Huntsville, and so she's just doing some really incredible things, but she's working with the young, uh, with, well, not only the teenagers, but other people also. Mm -hmm. And she has a ramp, I think. Well, yeah. there, there is a, um, a grocery store in Hamilton, Alabama, that she has uh, bought, renting. I, I'm not sure what the situation is, but uh, she holds a, a youth group conference thing there on Saturday nights and Tuesday nights. And then throughout the year, she'll hold different conferences, different special events where there are two or three days of just almost like a I revival. I know Rusty Nelson. Uh, from Huntsville is a part of a group that she's doing and also Benny Hinn goes there. Different people from around the country actually participate in that. And it's great. Uh, but you know that's what God is doing. He's bringing people to care for the teenagers. Now what, is some, what are some of the challenges you see in the teens there at your church? Well we have the teenagers today do have more problems than what we are facing more more troubles than what we did as teenagers and we all as older people like to say oh we've been through that but I know we what, haven't been through we what haven't some been things. through exactly what some of these kids and are going some through today. of them today really is a make world. Uh, fun of the other teenagers oh yes they, I mean they are quick to ostracize other teenagers it's how do you think that we can keep the more popular kids from ostracizing some that are not as popular. I don't know that we can, but you know, the word tells us that when people make fun of us because of the Lord to rejoice. And um, so I think that's just a good thing. When people make, and it's easy to say, it's very easy to say, oh, well, if people make fun of me, I'm just going to be happy because the Lord told me to rejoice. But when you're 14, 15, It's very 16, hard to do. You cannot it's very hard to do. do that as easily no, until it's hard. you have a few more years of experience. And um, the only thing is just to encourage them, to encourage, to encourage, to encourage. Now, as a teenager, you were a person that your parents didn't, sh your uh, mother didn't really check in your room, didn't check what no. was going on. No. And what are you going to do with your child? Are you going to? My child's room is her room, but it's in my home. 
and uh, I'm allowed to go in there anytime I want uh, because my husband and I pay the bills. Um, we, we don't go in there to be rude to our daughter. We don't go in there to be overbearing to our daughter. We go in there because we love our daughter. I do not go in there and tear her room apart and look for things, but I talk with my daughter. My daughter knows that she can come with us. And most importantly, we pray for my daughter. And, um, and with your daughter. And with my daughter. Every day. That is something. See, every morning there is not a morning that we do not go to school that my daughter and I do not pray before we leave and take her to school. There are times that I will pray and there are times that she will pray. And when it, we first started doing that, she would pray and it was just very, Lord, thank you for this day and, and bless us. And now my teenage daughter just prays very strong and bold in the Lord. And she's blessing people and, and calling the name of the Lord out and saying, I want you to be with me. And she's doing wonderful things. And I, I've seen her grow in the Lord. And that's great to me. That's just exciting. Um, so if parents will give their own lives to the Lord, it's more yes, likely that their children will also. It would be very hard for a child um, to try to know the Lord only on Sunday in church, and that was the only place that they had, that they did not have a good example at home because most of our time is spent at home with your parents or at school with other kids. Well, of course, if you go to a public school, you may not be getting the Christian environment that you need. And then if you can't get it at home, the only time you're getting this is when you are at church. And um, Well, then there are the latchkey ki kids. They don't even see parents. Don't see parents. Maybe they're already divorced. And the parents don't go to church, don't take them to church. And so those are the ones that we have to reach out to in the exactly. community. Exactly. And it would be very easy for me to say, as, as a mother, to say, um, I go to church. I take my daughter to church. We're ollie ollie oxen free. And I'm not going to worry about anybody else. But that's just not the way God wants us to be, I don't think. Um, there are parents that aren't going to take their children to church. There are parents that are not going to teach them in the ways of the Lord, whether they go to church or not. They're not teaching them in the ways of the Lord. And that's what we need to do. If their parents aren't doing it, then you know a kid that's not in church. Step up and be the spiritual parent in this relation, in, in this child's life. If their parents aren't, then you've got a job to do. And... Uh, one of the things that I've heard Karen Wheaton say many times, and, and I've tried to apply it to my life, is whatever you invest in the life of other young people, you will reap in your own. And as we've said before, I have a 13-year-old that's out in the world. I want good things for her. So I'm going to invest that in other young pe people also because I want that to come back to me. I want my seed to prosper in this world. And... Um, it actually turns out to be very fun when you do it. Mm -hmm. These kids, you oh, are set out. Things. Yeah, go ahead. You will set good. out to help these kids, and uh, in the process, you come away being the one that was very blessed. Um, I have a niece right now that um, has just come to know the Lord just two weeks ago, and um, she's 17. And that was the most exciting day for me. That was so exciting. I was just tears just going everywhere. I was so excited. Um, and through it all, I thought, I'm really going to help her. I'm really going to help her. I'm really going to help her. And the day, the night that she was saved, I learned a lot from her that night. I really did. You learned a lot from I learned her? a lot from her. Um, we thought that she was saved. She had professed to be saved a long time ago. I just took her at her word. Um, she'd been going through a lot of things, a lot of hard times, and um, we were after um, church one Sunday night talking, ministering to her, and um, it turned out that she was very honest, uh, very honestly looked at us and told us that she was not saved, that she did not mean anything from the heart the time that she had said it, that it was all just for convenience and that she wanted to be saved, but she had no intentions on being fake. And if she could not be real, she would not be doing it. And uh, she was very independent, but very smart. 
And uh, I think if we could grasp that, that God, I want to be real with you. I don't want to be fake. I want That's to be real with you. That's one thing about the teenagers. They are they honest. They can see through fakeness. <laughs> yes, they and can. And they also are looking for something to hold on to. Someone, Someone to believe in. To believe in. And, they, and the only way to do that is uh, to be consistent. Be consistent with them. Don't tell them in church that you love them and you want to help them. And then when they call you up in the middle of the night and say, you know, I've done something wrong. Can you help me? Um, you hang up available. on them. You've got to be available for them. Whether mm -hmm. it is convenient for you or not, you've got to be available. Whether it's comfortable for you or not. And that's what working in this area is all about, is getting out of your comfort zone and getting into something that you don't know and that you're not comfortable with but that you're just trusting God to take care of it. So, mm -hmm. I think very much about this being, uh, whenever this is aired, and I think it is going on live also, that this is the first of the year, but it doesn't matter if it's the first year or not, that uh, we can have fun with our teenagers. Now, what I think of as fun, actually that's a, an ac acronym for, they stand for focus on what we, this relationship. And in order to do that, really, Wendy, we have to listen to them. Yes, we do. And the you of fun is to unglue ourselves from the past. I don't think my microphone's working as well. I might have to share yours also. But unglue from the what we felt about. We see them with the orange hair, or the green or blue hair, and a lot of earrings on. and. Uh, I know my grandson, who is really a fine young man, just wonderful, actually has his hair down here, kind of like that, and he makes straight A's in school, makes, uh, works at a job, can fix his car. But to look at him, we call him Jesus, but he is, he is you know, he is a saved person, but not as attentive as maybe I'd like for him to be mm -hmm. to, uh, to the Lord. But just what you said earlier is just accept him right Love where, him he, where is. he is. Love him where he is. And when exactly. do we do that, the fun, focus on the relationship, the you unglued from our stereotypes, what we thought of them before, and the end is for now. Start now, now. and do that. And I think that's what we have to do is uh, set ourselves some SMART goals, specific, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented, and help our teenagers to do that also. Exactly. And what we have to do, that the world sh offers them so much stuff. Oh, yeah. The only yeah. thing, we can offer them great music, the world can too. The only thing that we can offer them that the world cannot offer them is the presence of God. That's the only thing we can offer them. One place where they can get peace. Exactly. The peace that passes all understanding. Exactly. And when we offer that, they'll hunger for more, and mm -hmm. they'll come. They yes, because they got to see it in us, mm -hmm. not us arguing in front of them, uh, even though it's not with them, maybe, exactly. but in front of them. They've got to see us love and give ourselves to love for all of our relationships, whether it's our maid or our neighbors or the people of on the street or the people in our own churches oh, the yeah. people when they're coming to church and they hear as they're as they're leaving they hear miss jones talking about the dress that miss smith was wearing or they hear somebody else fussing about the color of the carpet that i didn't like that color or i wanted these walls painted this why would they come back mm -hmm. they can get that as well so when we uh say terrible things about the other drivers exactly. and cut them off or try to cut in line first. Exactly. Or uh, get, you know, maybe we buy something in Walmart and they give us too much change. What they see is, are we going to take that change back? Well, it's kind of like a computer. Um, I hate my computer. We've just bought a computer at home and I hate it. I don't like it. I don't know how to work with it. I just hate it. Um, but what I've learned is you put junk into the computer and you get junk back out. If you put junk into kids, you're going to get junk back out. Junk in, junk out. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it simply is. Yeah. Whatever we want them to be is what we're putting. In, I mean, what we're putting in them. What mm -hmm. are we doing in front of them? 
Um, don't so what, we were, what, we're, what I hear you saying is believe in our teenagers. Yes. They're a good group Accept of kids. Accept them just like they are. Mm -hmm. Be a good example in front of them in all areas of our life. And to be a peaceful place for them to come to. Exactly. That they can feel assured that they can always come to Wendy or they can always come to Bonnie. Yeah. And that we will accept them and love them just, just where, where they, they are. are. And if you'd like to know more about this, then you could contact us here. Uh, call us toll free, 877-823-6886. And along with Wendy Westmoreland, I am Bonnie Libhart, and bless your heart for watching. We really appreciate Wendy Westmoreland and helping us talking about the teenagers. One thing I have encouraged people to do is to journalize, to write down what's going on in their life. I think if the teens would do that, the Sunday school teachers would do that, everyone, it would work. In fact, I had a vision, I guess you would call it, where when I was first going to write my very first book, I was in Texas, Waco, Texas, sitting out on uh, redwood furniture and under a tree, magnolia tree, and all at once I felt like I could see. I could see into people's homes, into libraries, beside their uh, bed, uh, their sofa, in the bathroom, little magazine racks, and all there were on the whole earth were the writings, the videotapes, the cassette tapes of people that had been on the earth and, and the people were saying, you know what? Wendy was telling the truth when she said, uh, was talking about what the Lord's done in her life. And now I, I wish I had listened more closely. So they can now read the books and I'm gonna encourage Wendy to write one. Uh, my daughter was one that wrote a newsletter. She was a Russian interpreter. She was an American that was a Russian interpreter. She took people to the former Soviet Union and she could speak and sing in the languages of the Russian people. And what she would do, she would take, let's say, eight or 10 people to, to the former Soviet Union and they would stand on the street corners and she would sing in Russian and then sing in English and then sing back in Russian. So that way she would draw a crowd of people that they could see, uh, they could hear what she was saying in their language and also they had some Bibles to get out, to give out. And I remember one day she said they went into, a, it was a bread store and she said she just felt really led to give this babushka, this old grandmother, a Bible and she went over there and handed the Bible to her and the lady just kind of smiled and then she looked at it and she saw it and she started just speaking and crying with tears running down her face and she said Dan, uh, the, Emily Doyne could understand what she was saying and she's saying for 60 years I prayed for my very own Bible and finally I have one that's my very own and she just thanked her and thanked her so much. Well, my daughter ended up uh, coming back to the States with a, ready to take another group and a car hit her and killed her. But she had, in this, she had helped me do the television shows we were doing on Victory Network and we lifted a dozen of her songs from that and put them on this CD. Well, they were on videotapes and put on CD. We're gonna have them on DVD and you can have these for a donation to the TV station for um, $10 or more, and we'd be happy to send them to you if you would like to have them. This is just called Emily. All these songs are what she actually wrote herself and sang them herself. They're not, uh, I would call them not really prof professionally done in the sense that they're just her with the guitar singing them, but they'll bless you. It's Holy of Holies and about uh, the times that she was out away from the Lord and what he did in her life. It would have sounded like some of the people that Wendy 
Westmoreland told about the teenagers, about her own life and the teenagers that she had. Uh, another thing that we have is a person that we did about 10 television shows with, and that's Jeannie C. Riley. And also, this one is from Christ for the Nation. Then we have the book. This is called Build a Better You Starting Now. And uh, it's an anthology that uh, you may have this for a $15 uh, donation to the TV station by calling the 877-823-6886. Another thing that we're doing is that we are taking a group of people to Alaska some of the ministers and singers, and we'd like for you to go with us also. If you would like to get in touch with us, then contact us at 877-823-6886. We'll send you the, the literature about that. And there's another book that just is coming out, and it's called uh, Mission Possible, What the Lord Can Do in Our Life When He is in charge because all things are possible with the Lord in charge. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Wendy Westmoreland for being here and uh, blessing us with how God has changed your life from being uh, from drugs and drinking to uh, serving the Lord now, just sold out to the Lord and bringing those teenagers to the King, to the kingdom to the king and to the kingdom. And we're glad that you joined us also, and we want you to join us again. And uh, any way that we can help you, we'll be happy to do that. Remember that God sent his son on the, uh, who died on the cross, and if you were the only one that ever lived, he would have sent him just for you. And you can come to him by just confessing your sins, getting baptized, and living for him for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean you have to live a perfect life. That just means that you live a forgiven life. I'm Bonnie Liphart, and along with Wendy Westmoreland, bless your heart for watching. You know, he was really apologizing, saying that he thought the Pentagon might have taken that information and might. It took $13 million.